Following a very successful wildcard week, it's now time to look ahead to FPL Game Week 7 with my midweek fixtures, transfer plans, team selection and captaincy. I am going to be responding to all comments on this video, so drop those dilemmas below and help me get this one to a thousand likes and subscribe to the channel. Let's get into it. Starting off with the game week six wildcard and the inclusion of one player made it very successful. Cole Palmer, I went against the grain compared to other content creators teams and it definitely paid off. I ended up with Raya and Gabriel in the defence as I shared initially. Rico Lewis was a late addition with news that he started in a more advanced position for the game against Newcastle and Konza. Nothing to mention in terms of defensive returns this week, but happy with how that defence looks going forward. Into the midfield and Palmer with those four goals, 25 points. It was an incredible performance from him. I can't kick myself for not giving him the armband because he never really was a consideration. Uh, Brian and Burmo joined the team and scored. Morgan Rogers, the first time I've owned him this season as well, with a goal. And then in my front line, Wood blanked, but there was an assist for Jackson. And the first captaincy blank of the season from Erling Haaland. That was a disappointing one, but yeah, still comfortably in the points and a massive green arrow, which I absolutely needed. And now I go into game week seven with two free transfers and 0.8 million in the bank. Now, before locking in those transfers for game week seven, it's important to remember there is midweek fixtures with a full slate of European games to seven Premier League teams, including four of them in Champions League action. And for the Champions League this week, you can join the sleeper Pick'em prediction game where you need to predict the winner of each game or a draw you get a point for each correct prediction it's absolutely free to play and there's a thousand pounds worth of prizes this week alone the winner will get a playstation 5 second place will get an ipad and third place will get apple airpods it's absolutely free to play it's available globally if you want to get involved hit the link in the description to this video and get your selections in. I think Manchester City away to Bratislava should have the edge in that game. Arsenal PSG, I think I'll go draw for that one. I think Liverpool will beat Bologna at home. Aston Villa v Bayern Munich, that could be anything. I think Kane though, the absence of him could give Aston Villa the edge. So I will predict a win there as well. They play on Wednesday. Then on Thursday, we've got Spurs and Manchester United away in the Europa League. On Thursday night, we also see Chelsea hosting Ghent. Now remember for this, Cole Palmer, not in the UEFA Europa Conference League squad for Chelsea. That's really important because he is going to be fully rested ahead of his fixture in game week seven. And just to note that League Cup third round action is going on for Newcastle United at home to Wimbledon. That game postponed from last week due to flooding at the Wimbledon ground as well. So because so many teams are in action, it's really important that you hold on to your transfers as long as possible. Friday night after the press conferences or even Saturday morning, if we get some leaks, it's really important to hang on unless you've got exact funds and are going to be priced out of your moves. Transfer plans then, and I've got two free transfers, 0.8 million in the bank. It always feels like an important time to roll the transfer coming out of the wild card. However, there is one move that I've been eyeing up that should happen fairly soon. Uh, Jackson, I've tried to take a two-week punt on him. Obviously got an assist in game week six. I am going to hold him for Forrest at home in game week seven, but then Chelsea's fixtures do get a bit more difficult. So... I think given that his uh, finishing has been problematic and Nkunku is doing very well in the midweek cup games, we could see Nkunku win that number nine place back from Jackson very soon. So there are other options around this price point. Obviously, I could move to Solanke. This again feels like a pick for game week eight where Spurs fixtures improve. Obviously, Solanke has been scoring since returning from injury and still remains a bargain as a nailed on number nine in the Spurs attack. We don't know whether he's on penalties yet or not, or whether that's Son's job, but he certainly looks attractive. My biggest concern now is the midweek fixtures, the Europa League. Uh, that does put me off a little bit. Now, 
A player I almost went for in wildcard but decided against was Aston Villa's Ollie Watkins. Now, I could get to Watkins in two moves. Again, it feels like a move that I could look to make in game week eight if Watkins can continue his form. Again, Champions League midweeks is a, a big ask for Aston Villa. They've not got the squad depth that Chelsea have for sure. So it's something that I need to monitor. And maybe he's a player that I bring in after the international break with three free transfers. Uh, I would have to downgrade either Rico Lewis or Colwell down to Vandenberg. Now, Colwell down to Vandenberg at 4 million. He played right back in Brentford's last game. I've only just got the exact funds for that now, so it could easily be priced out of that. So it could have to be the Lewis move. So it's something that I'm weighing up. But I do need to give it a little bit more time and I am prepared to give Jackson one more game week. And I'm super excited to hopefully be in a position coming out of the international break where I have three free transfers for the first time in FPL. Team selection time then and Raya at home to Southampton. That has to be a clean sheet from him. Uh, into the defence and I do have a decision to make of whether to play Colwell against Forrest at home or Konza against Manchester United at home. I do feel like Chelsea perhaps just have the easier fixture. So I think it will be Colwell over Konza. Let's just see what happens midweek. Uh, I've also got Lewis at home to Fulham and, and the double up on the Arsenal defence. So hopefully they can lock in that clean sheet. Now, with a strong front seven and a cheaper uh, substitute in the midfield in Dibbling, I think the front seven kind of picks itself. Um, and six of the seven are at home. So high hopes for their performances. So I've got Saka at home to Southampton. Like, that could be any score. Arsenal would just incredible in terms of the chances they created against Leicester. Palmer at home to Forest, we've got Umbermo at home to Wolves and Rodgers at home to Manchester United. And then in the forward line, it's Haaland at home to Fulham, Jackson at home to Forest. And then perhaps the trickier fixture is Wood away at Chelsea. And that's the thing that just brings big question marks on starting Colwell over Konza. It's not very nice when your attackers meet your defenders in FPL. So that's something that I need to weigh up ahead of the deadline. Now, the even bigger decision to make this week is on captaincy. And I've whittled it down to three options, my three premiums in my squad. So Haaland at home to Fulham, Saka at home to Southampton, Palmer at home to Nottingham Forest. Now, on paper... Saka has the easier fixture, Southampton at home, that could be an absolute mauling, looking at the amount of shots that Arsenal had against Leicester. So if I was picking it just on fixture, Saka's a great option. I think the absence of Odegaard hasn't really hindered Arsenal. Obviously, I'll be interested to see Arsenal in midweek. They've got the tougher fixture in midweek, which does put me off a little bit. At least that fixture is on Tuesday, but home to PSG is not easy. When you compare that to Haaland, who's got to travel to Bratislava on Wednesday, that gives him less time to prepare against Fulham. Fulham have looked good defensively this season. Getting that win away at Nottingham Forest was huge for them. So I don't think we're going to see a mauling, but this fixture was 5-1 last season to City and Haaland got four goal involvements, including a hat-trick. He scored every time Fulham have visited the Etihad. So it's a game that I can see Haaland scoring in. I've also got Palmer waiting in the wings as well at home to Forest. And we know Palmer has got the midweek off. Uh, he's not going to play in midweek. I know Chelsea do, but he doesn't. Forest obviously do have the midweek off and have looked good defensively. They've not conceded many big chances on their goal. So it is a really tough one to weigh up who's actually got the better fixture and who's going to get the most minutes. I think I'm going to have to play the minutes game. So I am going to reflect on performances by teams in midweek and minutes for these players for Haaland and Saka. At the moment, though, it does feel difficult to go against Haaland for captaincy, especially when I've got, you know, triple Chelsea and triple Arsenal in my squad. So it's I think it's going to be Haaland captain Saka Vice, but you never know when it comes to the deadline stream on Saturday, I may change my mind and be influenced by those midweek games. Here's the team then in full for FPL game week seven, rolling the transfer to give me three free transfers 
out of the international break. If you've enjoyed this video, let's get it to a thousand likes and subscribe if you're not already to the channel and you're enjoying the content. Remember, I'm answering all comments on this video that go in within the next 24 hours. So leave those below as well and check out in the description, the link to the Sleeper Champions League prediction game where you can win a PlayStation 5 this week. Thank you for watching. Thank you.